All right, so <clears throat> howdy D and D world. I am DM Grim with another crazy episode. Uh, this time will be a one shot with one of my players to continue a story that's in a uh, future campaign and change the course of time or make it better, good or bad. Uh, the story is taking place in a desert where there's very few civilizations around and uh, Coast Summit is slowly becoming overrun with uh, destruction of evildoers, bandits, and mischievousness, and so they're looking for people secretively on hiring people that's willing to stand up against the evildoers, and yep, there you go. Uh, so it's any day like any other. And the townspeople walk around eerie and sad and just feels as if life in their eyes is just giving up. And maybe there's no law and there's no order amongst the people that uh, they finally uh, begin to walk around and see a posters here and there, and back alleys, and underneath tables in the bars, a wanted poster. Wanted poster? Yep. You look at it? Uh, yeah, I would like to construct this wanted poster. So you would see that the they're looking for someone to root out a bandit camp within a day's journey walk and stop the trade influence of illegal goods and the economic system of animals being forced to either fight in pits or manual labor. I'm just saying to myself, it seems to me like these people have no culture. Oh well. I take the poster and I look for where I need to go to uh, sign up. Uh, whilst, whilst I'm doing that, I kind of want to, what time of day is it in the town right now? Morning. Morning. Okay, so I want to try to, like, uh, I don't know, go to a back alley, change my appearance. I want to change my appearance to a younger man, blonde hair and all. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to do that, change myself into a young man, since I'm a changeling. And then um, I'm going to show up to this, uh, this place to turn in. Uh, to, to ask about the quest. Alright, so you would go to the bartender and begin discussion. Uh, I see that you found the wonder poster underneath the table. I, It's kind of strange one moment. You would think that the uh, town doors would be locked and then there's papers scattered everywhere. It almost seems like a revolution. Oh, nobody's here. Channel owner. Do I get a slow quest room? Well, at the moment, I don't know much about it. I may be looking around. And around town. And maybe you'll find someone either suspicious of good hardiness or maybe evil and looking for selling illegal goods. Yeah, still playing the act of being a man, young adventurer, I'm like, thanks sir, thank you, appreciate it. And he just walks out of the tavern and 
he tries to look for somebody who might be looking for work, looking at one of the job boards or whatever. Oh, he would begin to go towards the center of town and begin to notice a new person has arrived in town with pointy ears heading in the direction of a back alley towards the inn. Cool, I'm gonna follow him. So as you I'm do... Follow him, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm just gonna follow him. I'm not gonna go we'll stay for the rest. It's alright. Uh, as you would, the individual stops and looks at a piece of paper on the wall. Hey there, buddy. Uh, you looking for work? He points to it. I see that they're looking for someone to stand up to. The environment of what's going on around us. Maybe it's a good change of pace and maybe have the people see that there's good in the world. Yeah, yeah. There's a nice chance to make a lot of cash. I see I have a job here. I just need somebody to back me up, you know what I'm saying? She said the paper about the, uh, the, the encampment of, uh, people doing, uh, illegal trades and goods, you know, like, well, this is the biggest job I've found so far. I see that it matches the one on the wall. I guess we are. I guess it would make sense to join forces and figure it out together. Safety and numbers and all. Right. And he would, uh, pull up, but his hand would stick out in front of you, and then he would begin to introduce himself as, uh, let's see, what would be the name? Star. And I am from a place far from here where the trees grow. As tall as one would enjoy. It's a little bit of a tree That's kind of weird. We also believe that nature should be kept in balance. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure a lot of people think balance, you know, nature should be balanced too, you know, but I, I think nature is meant to be exploited. And also, uh, you know, it's like you said, it's good to plant trees every once in a while. But you also you know, we use nature as a resource, and I will not deny us that that uh, that gift. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now you can uh, introduce your character to D and D world and give the individual a name of what you just. See fit. Um, if you call me Pan, name is Pan, nice to meet you. I think for you, since I don't really know your name and all you really said is where you come from, I'm going to just call you, um, he's looking at his features, he's like, socks up my piece like, I don't know. You can call you coconut. How's that sound? Do you like that word, coconut? Yeah. It would make sense. All right. Living up towards the beach. All right, cool. So, all right, coconut, let's, uh, let's saddle on up. Get ourselves a nice uh, payout, you know? Yeah. So, uh, as the individual would take the paper and take it off in the wall, he would... Uh, you would have noticed a map at the back of it. Oh, nice, nice. There's a map on this thing. That's interesting. I'll turn off the paper that I have and see if there's a map on the back of that one, too. And you would see the same map matching Ooh. dot for dot. That's correct. Very nice. He folds up the paper he has and puts it in his, his inner pocket inside of his jacket. Mm -hmm. Then he takes the other paper and is just like, all right, so we got a backup map, and now we got this one. 
So we follow them, use this map, and if we lose that, I got a spare one. Does that like a plan? It would seem so when someone's staying anonymous on keeping their identity secret. <laughs> not, I'm referring to the, uh, the person that laid the posters and maps around. Right, yeah, no, we can talk about that. Yeah. <clears throat> I haven't figured anything out yet, but... Uh, <clears throat> I'm just like, well, uh... Maybe, maybe when we finish the quest, uh, we collect something, maybe a script, and then we come back and... We turn in, uh, I don't know, maybe these, these individuals have... Uh, you know how knights have battles? Maybe they got something like that, something we can use as proof that we've been there and we did the job, you know? Yeah. Turn it into the town hall, get the gold, and then at that point we split it, we split it, you know? Yeah. If you want. But, uh, yeah, that's that's what I'm thinking anyway. Well, we'll figure it out in a day's time, and, and at the moment we'll split the reward down the middle, as long as both of us make it out alive. It'll do, it'll do. Well, then we shall begin our journey to the, the desert, because he would be. What? I'm just I'm looking at my inventory. I'm, uh, oh. I'm just looking at the fact that I have 10 rations, and I have, a, uh, I have one tinder box, I have two torches, and um, a pin. I have pins and, and I think, I think, I think this is a mess kit. I think this, yeah, I have a mess kit as well. Mm -hmm. so, so I can, I can cook food accordingly. So then what will you, so as you would begin to leave town, making sure that your inventory is together, you would do the same, checking each pocket, walking out into the desert. And then y'all would begin traveling. Uh, it is much different environments living closer to the ocean than living out here in this barren wasteland. I'm gonna get my own plus, you know, you don't got trees to hide behind and you can see people traveling. Uh, a distance away, so it really doesn't, I mean, it doesn't bother me, of course, I've lived here for a while now, so, uh, you know, it's not too bad. Seems so, I mean, more of a darker skin tone. Yeah, well, uh, you know, you know us darker humans, we, uh, definitely, uh, get shit done. We'll see. And you would suggest that maybe we should... Do the fast pace. Uh, yeah, let's uh let's pick up the pace. We we don't wanna we wanna at least try to get uh let's see. Well, you said it was gonna take a day, right? So yeah. we want to at least get there early morning, right? Or at least uh get within a certain distance that it won't take us. Uh, it won't kill the daylight for uh, yeah. for traveling there. So let's let's pick up the pace, man. And he starts he starts uh, walking a little faster. Yeah. So you would follow behind as the day would set. Uh, he would say that we should set up camp and in the morning we should figure out what goes on on the other side of this too. Right. Um, I, yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a good idea. Let's let's make some camp, and in the morning we can can assault these beans. All right. So uh, you would suggest that you take first watch, and then you'll take the remainder. Uh, All right, probably. All right. So, uh... Um, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, when he takes, when he takes his, uh... First watch. So when, while he's, while he's sleeping, so since I'm taking first watch, right? Yeah. Can I, 
can I rummage through his pockets uh, stealthily and see if he has anything on him, like gold or small trinket of some kind? So first, uh, stealth. Okay. So first, stealth. It's a plus, a plus four for me. Uh, D20 plus four. That's a 14 stealth. And then after stealth, roll a, uh, let me see. Still, then invest to uh, Gishin. Yeah, because you're okay. supposed to be Gishin. That's a plus one, plus one to 20, plus one. 17 investigation. Nice. Yeah. And then after that, slide a band. Slide a hand plus two. Twenty plus two. That's a dirty twenty. Ah, uh, the nobi. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Let me see. Yeah. So, uh, you would begin. To search the man as he's sitting in Indian style, and he's awake but asleep at the same time, in some sort of trance. You begin to notice that this individual is a spellcaster, not from anywhere you've seen nor heard. Then you would notice that one of his items has carved carvings for it. And it, it would seem useful for this magic user. Uh, after which you would find his everyday equipment. So what would his everyday equipment consist of? And is it does he have? Um, hold on him, of any kind, like kind of armor, and he'll take it. Um, <laughs> where is it? I'll say he's got 10 gold. Swiping that, taking that 10 gold for myself. And then you'd find like torches, rations, a water skin, backpack. Uh, I'm gonna. Now, does his water skin seem full? Is it full of water? Uh, no. Because he'll, he'll no. traveled. No. So he's, you can assume that they are... Or he was thinking that he would refill it at the bandit camp, but they were, if y'all were successful. Alright, so this is what I want to do. Uh, I'm going to sabotage his water skin, so I'm going to cut a hole in it. And uh, I'm going to take uh, half of his rations and stuff it into my bag. Uh, so the number four or the five? It's going to be one less ration. Uh, how many, how many rations? Uh, I guess I should have oh, asked. How nine. many rations does he have left? He has nine rations? Yeah. So, you see nine. Eight, seven, six, five, four. Yeah, I want to see five rations in his, so I don't have four rations left. And I want to stuff those five rations into my bag with the rest of my rations. All right. And, yeah, that, that'd be that. All right. Uh, and then when it's, uh, I'm going to set my, I'm going to set my bag up on one of these, uh, like a, like a door of some kind. I don't know what's around me. I don't know if it's like high dooms. And we're just in the middle of it with a campfire. Yes, but it. if that is the... Okay, so if that's the case, then I'm going to set up on one of the dooms. Mm-hmm. And then when it's time for me to switch with him, I'm going to lay onto on my bag so it's not accessible while I sleep. So roll, I'm just going to lay on my bag. Roll two perceptions, and you're going to go through two torches. Two 
Mm-hmm. 16, uh, 220 plus 1, yeah. 8. So after the uh, torch begins to flicker and go out, you would, uh, as your time's close to ending, you would hear things running off in the distance, but past that, it was a nice night. When it's my turn, I, I kind of just like, you know, I tap his hand since he's sitting in Indian style. I'm like, yo, it's your turn, man. It's time for you to take watch. And then he goes and uh, lays on his bag and falls asleep. Alright, so what we will do is proceed to fall asleep his last two hours and then finish the night with the remaining watch. So I have 10 rations, so 9 plus 5, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, so I have 14 rations in total, and I have, I have 15 gold plus 10, so that is, uh, it's 25 gold, so I have 25 gold left. Alright, dope, 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 dope. Yep. Oh yeah, and I said, I just water skin, so when he tries to go and fill that shit, <laughs> Oops. Uh, Alright, so, so that's it for me. I'm just, I got to get my inventory in order. Yeah. Um, so you would, uh, for the night, uh, it seemed pretty nice and uh, cool. Nothing really too bothersome. And then you would begin to wake up with a big bird uh, trying to peck at your shining objects. Um, shining objects, okay. Uh, oh. Huh. A big bird, huh? Yep, a big bird. Uh, level one, I want to cast Animal Friendship as I offer it a uh, morsel of food. Alright. Uh, I needed to make... I needed to make a wisdom saving throw. What's, uh, DC? So, my DC is 11. Alright. Yes. Oh, yes, so... He fails, so he is... Charmed. charmed for the next 24 hours by me. So you would notice that it's a flightless bird with its beak in the shape of an axe. Mm. <laughs> Can you copy? So, uh, I have a rope. I'd like to tie the rope around its neck and lead it. All right. Uh, oh. Yeah, we got a bird over there, so I have a new bird. Uh, he's over there uh, in a trance, I guess. So no, he's not. He's woken up. Well, it's just during he's it, woken up. Okay, yeah, cool. when, when his watch was going, uh, the bird snuck up and tried to be stealthily take at an object that you had shining, and it was unsuccessful. Uh, so, got the bird, got the gold, got the food, got, uh, got a teammate. I'm like, all right, man, I got a bird. Uh, can't wait to see if I can get anything from this. Don't know what it is, but so it's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, we got you know, a place to travel, and then we'll be at our location, my friend. Let's go. Let's do our thing. So you would begin to climb. Up the side of this uh, sand dune, and not notice off in the distance a a rock that's not completely round, but it's easy enough to walk straight up and down the edge without worrying about slipping and falling. That's supposed to represent a, a hill uh, from the winds. Yeah. 
I, I would point that out to him and be like, all right, yo, look at uh, look at that over there. See that rock? Mm-hmm. Looks uh, starting up to climb up, climb down. It doesn't look like we'd have too much trouble with it. So uh, I'd say we have yeah. Well, you would know so, this. Uh, it took 10, 10 feet walls around with two guard towers and one gatehouse. On top of the hill, and coming on the a what looks to be a trail off in the distance is this group of nomads again walking up and around the hill over and over, climbing to the top, uh, carrying what looks to be the same looking bird. You out. Um, oh, so they maybe they lost a bird. Maybe those you think those are guards for whatever you know castles up there. He would look. I'm asking. Yeah, I know. So he would look to you and say, "This is probably the spot that the map is referring to regarding the." Uh, conclusion of what's going on and it looks as though they're trading with the uh, smaller indigenous tribes and not having to do all the work right okay cool so i asked him do you want me to do some recon because i can definitely get in there uh do you have a way that I could contact you right quick of any kind? Do you have a suggestion? Hold on, let me move them up there. No, I'm just real playing, that's all. No problems. Yeah. So you tell you that either A, we wait until night time and let the nomads leave and hope that more follow them or B attack now and have more individuals to deal with as, um, as it is we attack the moment the nomads leave I think that's a solid plan. I was merely referring to uh, maybe uh, I could pass myself off as one of the nomads real quick and uh, gauge what kind of uh, people we're dealing with, essentially. Because I have I have a shovel. Mm. He takes it out of his bag. He's like, I have a shovel. They even have the clothing, so maybe disguise myself, gauge what we're dealing with, come back, and, well, as soon as I exit, stealth away, and tell you what I've learned. Uh, I mean, that's up to you. Well, you can uh, persuade him to wait a brief moment to get to be a scout. Right. So, I mean, either way, I mean, he's, he's telling us to the, uh, the pointier general, he's like, either way, they're going to be walking in their gun. So that's why I want to try to take this opportunity now and get some things done. Yeah. That way, you know, maybe if there's multiple exits in there, maybe a treasure tent, something, something substantial. Maybe a way for us to escape if things get too hit. Yeah. So, um, did you roll it? Oh, uh, yeah, you want me to roll persuasion? Sorry. Yeah, roll persuasion. Uh, persuasion, maybe. Oh. Um, I have a question. Yeah. Um, can it be deception? Because But you want I, to, you just want him to wait, not, you're not telling him what everything is. 
Yeah, plus one. And it's a nine. Damn. It's a solid nine. Let me see something. Yeah, it goes. Let me tell you. If you want to leave, you can leave. It's not uh, a problem. Alright, uh, cool. So, uh, you hold the bird. He passes the uh, the rain to him, and then he quickly changes. Uh, well, he doesn't even change his clothes. He just puts the clothes over his armor and shawl, and he starts walking. He's like, "Yo, I'll be back." And uh, what you could do though is just just look look around the area and you know keep yourself hidden for now. I'll be back in a bit. So I'm gonna walk up to the the castle. Is there an entrance? Yeah, so 60, uh, roll. Are you rolling stealth to go there? Uh, I'm not gonna roll stealth. So as soon as I'm a good distance away from the sorcerer, I'm gonna change back into my normal appearance. Mm -hmm. So... It's fine. Um, so, I would see that the, uh, one of the guards is, uh, looking at the nomads, and then he begins shouting, uh, open the gates, and then the gates underneath the one of the rough looking individuals uh waves his hands more and then the gates open and before your eyes. I walk in I walk in uh I walk in regular, you know? Just nonchalant you just strolling on in. And I'm looking for whoever's in charge. I mean, I know who's in charge, but fuck it. <laughs> I'm looking for the big boss. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me just move a little faster. Okay, so. The... Nomads, the uh, other party individual, walk through the gates into a tent, finding more more bandits amongst the ins inside, just snoring away. And after that, you, the front gate doors would begin to shut and who walks in first no matter you uh, mm -hmm. i think uh i think the nomad should walk in first and then i'm walking after them because i mean it don't really matter if the, if the gates are closing behind us and the nomads are in front of me it makes sense to me, honestly. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on. I'm, I'm a criminal, let's be honest. <laughs> uh, let's see. Those two there. So, do we notice one of them having a little more? of uh, authority split from the other human nomads and they, as they put the bird inside of a pen 
and then you let the nomad walk in first. And I guess you take the corner of the tent. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I, I suppose we're going to the, the main tent, you know, the guy who's going to be making trades and stuff. Yeah. Kind of cool. That's perfect. So, as the nomad walks into the center of the room, you begin to see two dogs laying on either side of this rough individual, more beefy, and begin welcoming both of you inside. Uh, then, hey, boss. I'm just going to say, hey, boss, it's nice to see you again. As you would, you would see bones being gnawed on by the dogs. Uh, and small trinkets laid across uh, places with uh, a chest inside. Mm-hmm. And then you would say, uh, Welcome uh, to my humble abode out in the middle of nowhere. I see that the perfect timing. We can get down to business and have a grand feast together to celebrate this great occasion of another successful trade. Right. Hey, boss, I got a, I got a question. Oh, well, actually, I'm gonna just approach the boss and be like, I got a, I got some info for you. I think you might like. Well, you'd say, and, uh, get on with it while I just go. Sp- Giving this nomad his reward. I got a good catch, boss. A high, uh, an elf, I believe he is, and he's a spellcaster. I guess no grand feast after all. As he would uh, pop his hand in the dogs, or just begin to like figure, like one would go walking from your side to your back. And the other one would walk from your side to the other side of the nomad and then begin to just proceed to go out of the uh, tent and just roaming around and doing whatever the fuck they want. Alright, cool. Um, I'm just gonna say, alright, I met him in the town. I went through his pockets, cut his ra- rations in half. I got most of the hands of the hands and boss to five rations. I managed to steal this off of him. Oh, uh, here's, here's your cut, because, you know, it's always that 3% tax. So I'm going to give you all the gold I got off of him. 10 gold. He doesn't have any more water. And I plan on leading him in here tonight so we can, uh, you know take what belongs to him and possibly I'm thinking since he's a spellcaster you're probably something for a high bidder so he thinks that I'm just in here spying for him Mm -hmm. but I came here to warn you as to what he is and when he's thinking we're going to attack this place which is going to be at night he would uh, jump up and say Boy, you always talk too much in front of our individ- our uh, guest. Oh, well, if they, if they know what we are, then they understand what business is. And if they think about telling anybody that, you well, know, I might have to, uh, I just look at them and I want to roll, can I roll intimidation on them? Yeah. And say, uh, they won't, they won't dare tell our secrets to anyone else. They know better. Yeah. Uh, let me since I'm proficient. Plus three, plus three, plus three, plus three, plus three, plus three. That's a 22 intimidation. Yeah. So the uh, nomad would place his left hand over his heart 
and agree with the nod. And besides, I won't be here to serve you whenever you die. As a problem with that, I'll kill them. I'll kill them for free. No extra gold on the town. The captain, rock individual, begins to sit back down in his chair. And then he points into the opposite corner he stood in. And gesturing that the nomad can gather what was agreed upon and leave. And when he would be. Yeah. waiting there for him to acknowledge my plan. That's all. So, as you begin to walk towards the exit, the other two nomads step around and begin to collect crates of supplies. And then, so I'll create for each, each one of them too. And then they would walk out. And then the gates would open and close. Then the, uh, the captain would say now that prying ears are not around. That maybe we should get ready for this trap you have set. Yeah. I want to lead him into the center of town, so I'm going to unknowingly lead him into a place where most of the space is open and he'll think, oh, okay, so we're here, nobody's asleep. And what I suggest is you guys, uh, you have been, you have our men wait and wait to surround the this, this center of our camp. Guards in the towers of poison and at the right moment you get to take the glory I'm going to disappear from this side, appear as myself, and then, look, you know the drill, boss. Perfect catch, right in the middle of town. Okay. What we shall do is send three of our goons out as, uh, what do you call them, uh, collateral. And make it seem as though the camp bench is abandoned and keep the guards still on rotation on the towers. And then when nightfall comes back around, the three guards turn back around and double back and block off the gate. Copy. Uh, no? Have a guy in the tower uh, watch my position. I'm going to walk back. Uh, to where we are, so just keep eyes on us. So, uh, um, and you would be. By the way, to... you, which direction did we start off from? Mm, right, more from uh, from here off to the to the uh the fort. South. Which direction from the fort is that? Uh, north. Okay. Oh, no. Well, he would tell. Mm. Oh, okay. North, okay. Northeast, okay. North, it's between North and Northeast. But y'all came okay. in from the, the South West, South, Southwest. And then okay. instead of going around the, instead of going around the mountain, you just uh, climbed. I climbed over. Yeah. Okay. So I just point in the direction of northeast and there's west and northwest. I'm like, so about this direction is where where we made camp and where I came from and where he still is. So north, uh, the northwest, northeastern tower should be occupied, so you can see us coming in. Yeah, and after which you would begin to walk up the three individual tents and take three. Goons feet and telling them to wake up. Get your asses up. We got a mission for you. Then they move and be disappointed. 
as they begin to walk out of the tents and be like, what do you want? Into the bookstore. Be out of the path of the gate. As soon as I walk in with my target, you block off the exit. Do you understand me? We'll see. No, we're not gonna. We're not gonna. We'll see. Can I roll intimidation again? Yeah. <laughs> It's a seven. <laughs> see, we'll see. So you have to accept oh, the answer. We'll you have to accept. Yeah, you know, accept again. All right, we'll see. Uh, uh, then they would ask you to step aside. Yeah, I, I would already like as soon as I kick them awake and yeah. tell them what the plan is. Uh, outside. I'd appear from the boss, and then I'll change my face back to what I want, back to the young adventurer that I, that I took Persona as. Yeah. And the other three ruffians would begin to gather their belongings and begin to walk in kind of like a triangle, but this is a square map. They'd walk like that. A triangle. And, uh, oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, but, uh, and they would just walk out into the desert. The gates would open and close. That's all you would hear is a sound. Because, uh, you're changing inside the tent. Right. Yeah, I put the clothes back on and uh, I walk out uh, right after them. And since my face has already changed, uh, only it's, you know, put the clothes back on, walk out, so, and make it seem like I'm trying to sneak away to, to the, uh, to my teammate locations. Uh, so what you'll do is, uh, what you'll do is, uh, climb up onto this barrel filled with water. And use it as your boost up. Then you'd put your other foot on another barrel filled with water. And have a five five foot uh step up. And yeah. then you would use your arms to and your body to flip your body over the remaining five feet of the the wall and wall and acrobatics to roll across the uh, the hill and not hurt yourself. Okay, good. This is a plus two. Each one is plus two. Plus a four. So as you would uh, begin to make it over the mountain, you would uh, catch your clothing on the uh, wall and just hang there like uh, like when kids, uh, their bigger brothers would put them on a coat hanger and walk away. Right. Yeah. So now you are dangling on the wall, stuck there. Um, well, so I'm going to take out the knife I have and cut it so I can fall. Alright. Cut. Shit. We got to roll. What if you miss and it falls? I got a, I got a roll to attack. Yeah. The, uh, off? Yeah, what if it what if what if you miss and the dagger just slips out of your hand? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Plus six, that's plus two, plus proficiency results. Four. See? It's a six. Oh, as, Jesus Christ. As, as you would begin to uh pat your side. Uh, and trying to, uh, raise your hand up, you begin to shift your body and your hands get sweaty and the blade slips, not gripping the handle, but gripping the blade. And then you would just watch as the, the dagger would just lay on the ground 
And you'll just hang your head like, oh no. Oh, no, fuck it. I guess the only other thing I can do is take off the clothing. Well, okay, bye. Well, let's. Well, you roll your uh, athletic. Ath 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 athletics. 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 What is athletics for me? Uh, let's, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Plus two. Seventeen. So as you uh, begin ripping. Uh, your clothing to remove remove yourself from the wall. Uh, you as you land and lift your head up. Uh, but before you lift your head up, you begin to hear footsteps run really quick and then just stop and then begin pecking sounds at the dagger. Wait, what? There's a pecking sounds. Like something trying to pick up the dagger. Yeah. Okay. Uh, after you would pick your head up, you would notice that it's the axe beak that you friended comes oh. to you. Oh, really cool. Well, I guess uh, I just got the pad up with the head, and uh, I'm like, oh, so I guess he really didn't take care of you, did he? <laughs> uh, I think, uh, I let him, uh, I picked the dagger up, and I kind of place, place it in my, uh, my sheath. And then I, is the lead still around his neck, or, yeah, or well, what? Yeah, well, the rope, but, uh, roll, roll a strength or a uh, acrobatic side, but it's still, to get it out of his mouth. What? Oh. You know, like a dog with a chew toy, and they don't want to give it up? Yes, I do. That is a 17. Mm -hmm. Alright, so as you would, you yes. would, as you would begin to pick it up from the ground, you, and clench it into its beak, you would snap it from, like, real quick check it from its mouth before it can, like, lock jaw it. Mm -hmm. Don't get your shinies in a minute. Once we get this motherfucker, right? No, no. He, he takes the lead and he, he uh, makes it. Uh, it makes it look like he's a he's a old man. Well, walking with this guy with this axe to be a kind of distance. So I'm just gonna now shallowly walk back over to where uh, my my sorcerer friend is and uh, I'm gonna be like, uh, all right, cool. So what? Uh, I found out some useful information. Oh, no. um, so, as you would take it back in his direction, you would notice that he's not there. Oh. Okay. Um. Yeah. All right. So. You would see the water skin that you sabotage laying on the ground. Uh, all right, so I'm my from the natural explorer uh, as a desert. Can I track him to see where he went? You can, yeah, you can try. Mm. So I you know. So Okay. 
would have a double proficiency, which would be uh, which treated as a double proficiency, so that means it would be plus uh, let's see, it's a double. Oh, so that means that it would be plus five just for now. Okay, cool. Plus five. That's a nine. Mm. Oh, nine. So, as you would uh, begin to lean forward and pick uh, the water skin up, a uh, light breeze picks up and muffles the tracks into non-existent this is full my man i told him to stay there oh, damn it. i guess the only thing i could do is uh ask my ex be friend to snip him out because i guess i'm just fucked all right so uh Snip out the point of your fucker. Let's see. So as you would begin to watch the Axe Beak look at the uh look at you strangely. A look at the water skin and then just proceed to peck at your uh, dagger. Well, the dagger is sheathed, so you can't see if it's shiny or not. No, I know, but I'm saying, like, he's distracted on the dagger and he can't find the tracks. <laughs> so I guess I'm just fucked. That's nice to know. <laughs> Thanks. Um, you know what? Fuck that. I'm gonna call out to God, and I'm gonna be like, hey, man, I need some help, because, uh, you know, dumbass elves can't stay in one place, so. That's a natural 20 to talk to God, to tell me where this man is. God would, natural 20. God would tell you that... As the wind would pick up slightly and whispers into your ear that he knows the truth. He knows the truth, how? Huh? Alright, so he knows the truth. That's nice to know, but I asked where he is. So where is he? Uh, you can make a pretty good assumption because of that, of knowing the truth, that he's probably went back to town. Oh my fucking god. How did you find out, son? I want to know that. Because I, I definitely did it to where he couldn't find out. So I want to know how he knew. Where is he? Because you rolled a nine on your... But that, wasn't, that wasn't for stealth, though. No, I know. It was to tell him to, to wait there. Persuasion. So he just so he just assumed that uh, he just assumed that I was working with them. But that's the thing, though. I I I was asking to roll deception because I wasn't just asking the way there. I was trying to get away from him. No, I know. But after that, so, no. I, so what would be the general idea? After he would know that you that there's a reason why you you wanted him to stay, then he would just begin to look in his belongings and notice. Sign after sign after sign, and then fuck that. I'm not, I'm not, this is happening like this. I don't care. <laughs> fuck that. I'm getting on the axe beak and we're riding over to where he might be. <laughs> if you follow the road, I'm gonna kick his ass. That's it. All right. Well, you will begin to catch up very quickly riding the uh, axe beak. So after, yeah. So after a short brief of couple of minutes. You would begin to see the elf dragging his ass using his staff as a result. Like he's wait, 
weight on it, like he's using his body weight on it, walking mm -hmm. across the sands. Bobby. So, uh, since, uh, since I can see him, how far away from him am I? Oh, uh, how far you want to be on, uh, the... I want to be close enough to where I could fire my poisoned, uh, hand crossbow at him. Yeah. So, that's, that's what I'm going for. Poison mm -hmm. crossbow. So, whatever the range is. On the uh, let me see. Let me check it. The normal range. Hand crossbow is 30 to 120 feet. So, you go 30 feet. Well, if it's 30 to 120 feet, then I no. guess I can be at 50. Well, then you'll be rolling disadvantage. So, do you want to roll disadvantage or no? I would be rolling disadvantage. Yeah. Alright, well, yeah, sure. 30 feet. 30 feet. Alright. Okay. So, you catch up to the little bastard in a very short amount of time and fire away. So, I have the archer reads. Uh, what is that? Plus two to attack rolls. Okay, copy. So that's going to be four, five, six. So D20 plus six. 25 to hit All right. with a poison, a poison crossbow bolt. Yep. No. Yeah. Damn. So crossbow bolt. Uh, what is it? Damn crossbow Plus two, and I gotta roll the poison damage. I'm sorry, three d six. Three, it's just a three d six for poison. Yeah, all right. So that's three damage from the hand crossbow. And here's the poison damage that's ten poison damage. Um, um, all right, so five, six, seven, eight. Uh, so you would hit the individual in the back and roll an issue. Alrighty. Plus two, plus two, plus two. Eighteen. Um, oh, it is oh. your turn. Uh, hmm. I guess it would be a good idea to bring in the gold snakey code. Why not? Okay. Uh, so he's been, so he's a medium, uh, he's a medium creature, but he's a giant poisonous snake, so that means he's a large. So, is that a bonus action? Okay, uh, bonus action, call him into battle, so I'll have to roll for his initiative as well. No, nah, just, um, uh, your bonus action, one or the other. Okay, so bonus action, uh, I whistle, and this just snake just rises out of one of the dunes in the sand, and just, just does like a, a mighty hiss as it coils around me, and the axe beak. Mm -hmm. uh, hmm. So I add my AC to his attack rules and damage rules. See, let's see. Any commands of just can't take on your initiative. It takes turn on my initiative. I'm going to try and convertibly verbally command. No action required by me. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to tell him to attack. So that's gonna be a bite. I'm gonna get a bite. I'm gonna bite attack him. Yeah. So we're gonna put some snake actions. 
That's a d20 plus 6 for his bite attack. 20 plus 6. <laughs> he had a natural one. <laughs> Uh, you can roll it again. Please don't give me another large one. That would suck. That's a... <laughs> that is a mother that one. All right. Wow. Oh. Let me see. Oh, dear God, that wasn't really an action. It was just three actions. They attack him. Never seen you so happy. Uh, the creature would, would as he would lunge forward, trying to strike. He would completely, uh. Just like sunbathe into the sand. Mm, well, since I didn't uh, require an action, I'm going to take out my whip, which is a. Uh, I'm 30 feet away from him, so I would have to be within uh, 10 feet of him to hit him. So I'm going to use my movement to walk within a 10 feet range. And I'm going to use my whip to, uh, that is also poisoned, to hit him yep. again. That's going to be a D20. Plus. Yep. What is your whip? Yeah. Whip. Plus. Yeah. Plus. I just want to do what I'm asking us to do. And I can use my strength or dexterity modifier for it. I can damage yours. Four. 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 So that means two plus two. That is four. Two plus four. And I don't think the. No, no, that doesn't help me. Four. So it's not a D20 plus four. <clears throat> Natural 20 to hit. Yep. With the whip. Boom. So that means the whip's damage dice is double, yeah? Yep. Which, uh, I guess that means it's a three. Three, D, four. Three, D, four plus my... One to two, three. ain't it? And then a 2d4. 2d4, well, no, whip is 1d4. Yeah, but crit is so, an extra 2. I never, I never understand doubles. I'm, I'm so like, uh -huh. just like, it, it really confuses me. Because I see when people do double and it's like 1d4, they'd be like, oh, it's 3, All or right. it's 2, yeah. or it's 5. You know, it's, it's, it's weird. I, I don't, I don't get it. I really don't. Well, so it's going to be um, 34 plus my uh, dex, which would be 2. And 6 damage plus the poison. So you make poison 66. What's up? Oh, 66 for the poison? Yeah. Oh my god. 21 points of poison damage. So as you would, uh, as your whip would begin to slash across. And, and, because it's uh, slashing or right slashing. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, uh, you know, whip is slashing, doesn't you? Yes. Because of doing slashing in a slashing moment, the, where the, one of the spots where the poison would be, would hit the same wound as where the arrow was. And as you would launch the arrow in the back of his, at the back of him more, the poison would have a direct contact into his skin, and you would begin to watch as he would fall into pain as he uh, dies in the desert.
It does? Yeah. Uh, hold on. I got you. Oh, here we go. He's going to survive today, my friend. Uh, good berry. I'm going to put a good berry in his mouth. And uh, he lives. But now I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to cut the, so I have a 50 foot rope. So what I'm going to do is, uh, I only need 10 feet worth of a lead for the axe beak. So I'm going to cut it, and I'm going to use that extra, I'm going to use, uh, let's see, I'm going to use a 10 feet of rope to wrap around his hands, and I'm going to use an extra 10 feet of rope. So I'm going to cut it into sections, I'm going to tie his hands, his feet, and then I'm going to connect, uh, I'm going to use another rope, another 10 feet of rope, so that means I basically have like 20 feet of rope left. I'm using 30 feet of rope and all to tie his hands, his feet, and then tie uh, the, like the restraints on his hands to his feet. So there's just like, there's like a full prison suit. So he's not dead. He's alive now, but he's not getting away. That's what they ensure. And uh, I have to let go of his stuff to so the back of the axe beak. I'm going to go right back. Right back. So he's not dead. Thank God. All right. Uh, so yeah, just let me know when I get to the bandit camp. <laughs> uh, let me see. Because uh, poison is expected. Uh, there is so if he, if he looks like dying stick another good berry in his mouth click mm -hmm. i have to figure it out but uh so it would proceed to go up the pathway with the uh, uh the bird and the npc yeah, so I have the snake following behind to make sure that he doesn't even think about running away. It's, just, it's not going to happen. You're yeah. getting sold today, baby girl. It's happening. So oh, you would just need to go up, 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 up. Just all the way around the mountain, following the, the smoother path all the way up the mountain. And the guard would whistle down to the bottom. Open the gates. He brought the individual himself. He would mm, pop off the bird. Uh, lug this bastard over my shoulder. And, you know, I'd, I'd wait to see where the boss is at. So, after you make it in... Can you put the, the bird inside the pen also? Uh, yeah, I'll put him inside the kennel. That's just an extra thing to sell at this point in time. Yeah. They would begin to close the gates. And you would begin to drag this elf into the boss's tent. As the dogs would uh, begin growling and being protective as they'd follow you. And, right. and then the uh, bandit, I see that the plan did not go according to plan. It's, yeah, he tried to run, but don't worry, boss. Our cash isn't getting away from us that easy. That's the way it got me. I see. Well, you are very sneaky and... Just so you know, I don't. Uh, I'm afraid that one day you will betray me. I'm not going to betray you, boss. I merely wanted to sell this little bastard and move on. Why do you think you sent me to the town in the first place? You sent me to find people for you. Why would I kill you? You're my source of currency. Are you not? Maybe so. But eventually, everyone uh, wants my seat. I wanna, I wanna persuade him 
that the young man, I, I don't want to see, I don't want to be the leader of anybody. I just want to be able to make money. And at this point, this is the easiest way to do that. What is that? The thing you suggest to prove uh, you don't want it. I mean, I could have snuck into the camp at night, killed you. You know, I did look like another person. I could have just blended in with the nomads and started a coup, slit your throat while your dogs went outside, by the way, I might I add. Or I could have... Uh, Took taking the elf to another bandit camp somewhere else and, uh, you know, said, screw you. But I decided to come back because, I mean, come on. Where, where can I find another bandit camp around here? Also, uh, <clears throat> he proceeds to, uh, he proceeds to show him that I gave you five rations of this little bastard, took his rations, gave it to you, sabotaged his water skins and couldn't get away. Um, hmm, how much more proof can I have? Huh, let's see. Oh, oh, the biggest one of all. I have a giant poisonous snake. I mean, if I wanted to kill you, it could have happened right now. Your dogs mean nothing to me. I could kill your dogs. I could take you on right now, one-on-one. -on -one. I could kill you. But I choose not to. That's your proof. What you can do. First of all, intimidation to have a straight face like the main business. And then persuasion on on it. Okay. It's just something I'm fucking saying. Ah. But intimidation, something like that. You can still, you can still win on the other. Mm. No, I can't. So, I mean, no, no. I gotta kill this motherfucker. No, no, no. I don't, no, no. So, I don't want it to go down this way, but. So, you would say, I'll, I'll take your word, I'll take your word. But just say no, I will have an eye on you in the future. Do what you want. It's just, I mean, hell, if you're so paranoid about it, just give me missions. Send me into the town. I'll keep bringing people. Magic users, fighters, or more animals. Keep me as far away from this camp as you want. I'll always come back. I'll give you more. Yeah. Don't you keep paying me. It's all right. Let's have this grand feast and wait for our friends to come back and enjoy the night. Ah, uh, also, before we start the feast, um, do we have any anti Because I did have to poison this little fucker to get him here. Nah, yeah, but he won't die. Alright, well, mm -hmm. uh, I give him to some other spirits in the home. I'd say, yeah, just lock him up, and uh, I'll have a feast with the boss. So what he'll do is throw a empty bottle out. At a, um, uh, what do you call it? A pole? I'm just gonna call it a pole. Uh, that holds the tent up. Mm -hmm. Hopefully. Anyways. Okay. So he shatters it as of a, like, aggression to get the other guards off in the distance, you know, like, uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 30 feet away. Uh, to wake up the other uh, individuals behind you, and then they would begin to trip and fall over the, the ropes. Like you can hear them tripping and falling over the tents and the ropes, trying to uh, come into the tent. Uh, and they're like, as, as they're taking him, I'm just like, make sure you take his books. If he has a spell book of some kind, if he has a lot, take that shit away. Lock him up tight, keep the restraints on him. And don't argue. So then the captain would look this glare into his men's eyes. And then they would put their heads down knowing that he's still in charge. And then he would say, you heard him? The captain would say, and then proceed 
the other three individuals would begin to carry him one by the legs, one by his arms, and one holding him in the middle of his body. And the dogs would proceed to follow behind uh, the three rough individuals. Because, you know, their dogs are nosy. And... Okay. Yep. Okay, all. You know, all That was awesome. <laughs> I think I'll do that once in a row. <laughs> uh, not even in a row. Yeah. Uh, my snake got two and a half ones, and then... And then I got a no, and then my two feet, and... Oh, well. So, it was a big game, nonetheless. Well, to wrap it up is, uh... As the party would begin to go on, and everyone would get trash as expected, and feast, the morning would rise, and the three rough individuals that were sent out to come back shortly after the sunset to, did not make it back. And that, and that's, well, that's why they were camping for them. Yeah. Yeah. So, is there anything you want uh, to say? I kind of skipped uh, your introduction and went straight in. Oh, no, that's, that's all good. I, I just want to know how much I'm going to be getting paid. What, what, what's next for the character? Where is he going to go next? Because the boss is so mistrusting of him. <laughs> yeah, sadly, you don't know, but yeah. Uh, so, you... Uh, in the morning, you would walk up to him to collect your payment of uh, a silver jug with wine in it. And what is it? Uh, a chest. Yeah, a single chest uh, containing. Uh, uh, let me see. A single chest holding money inside. Would you open it? Uh, yeah, I'll open it. You would see ten, ten ingots of gold. And... Oh, ten ingots of the gold, gold. So that's, that's way more than I was expecting. Okay. Mm. Mm, should be past the case then uh cool. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, looking at looking at the uh price and uh you know, looking at the amount of gold I got, I'm just like, hey boss, I mean this is ooh. Was he really worth that much? Was he that much of a a high making spellcaster? Uh -huh. I'm guessing it was it was a great find, huh? Well you brought the the bird and you uh oh, too. the the Spellcaster to the uh, it's not it's more uh, it is uh it's more of did was the guy worth that much or is he trying to buy your loyalty? Okay. Like he would tell you yes regarding your question of was this for the spellcaster? But I mean you can go on insight to see what I'm saying about. Yeah. Yeah. I'm willing to say it. I'm going cool with that. Insight, huh? Yeah. Don't have a good insight, but let's see what happens. Let me try. That's a 19 insight. Yeah. So you're pretty confident in asking to do more of loyalty than, uh, than actually what the individuals were. Well, um, oh, uh, well, now that I got all this gold, uh, I think uh, I think the boys can use some fresh equipment, right? I think, and uh, so he takes out he takes out two gold bars, and he's like, so he gives it to the boss, and he's like, uh, that is my investment in our fortress. So if we could build it out there, uh, you could tell me to go out to the town. I can order some things, extra water, weapons, you know. The what for for the what for, and then this part of the gold will come with me. 
I'll get myself some new equipment. So next time, when we want to capture, I don't know, maybe 10 spellcasters at once, I could be ready for it. You know? You were... So he, gives, he basically gives his dudes yeah. like 3%. You know, he does two gold bars easily. And he's like, all right, so these two gold bars are my investment in our fortress. And the rest I'll keep. What, 3%? But yeah. Uh, he, he smiles with excitement, uh, saying that the uh, offer was too generous. And he would place it in the monks of all the other chests, like laying on top of the other chests. The two gold bars. And right. there you go. Yep. Now I take my, my part of the share and uh, I go back to the town and I start all over again. <laughs> um, all right. So why do you want it? Give an ending. Uh, give an ending? Uh, so he proceeds to take his chest uh, back with him to the town he started in where he, you know, tricked that little elf, elf boy or yeah. sorcerer. Uh, and he's going to set up a business, an information business nonetheless, in that town. Um, and he, what his information business is going to be about is finding important people, spellcasters, and uh, just world events, honestly. Yeah. Oh, uh, and just any information around town. So those four things. That's what he's going to invest his gold into. All right. And any closing arguments? Or statement? Uh, no. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Three net runs in a row. I still like it. It's a great <laughs> game. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Hopefully we can come up with some more crazy stuff together. And Indeed. Thanks for listening, whoever does. Enjoy. You can find battle maps on Instagram with the link below. You can follow us on Discord or YouTube. Uh, if you do have Spoon, you can also listen to some of that there. Spoon is the uncut raw version, and YouTube is the edited version. So, just to let y'all know, and I hope y'all enjoy. Thank you very much. Peace out. Thank you.